Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla review and today I'm taking a look at another one of my favorite line of Gunpla model kits, which of course is Master Grade, and this right here is the Master Grade Gundam X. So this one in particular is the Master Grade Gundam X Unit 3, but it's exactly the same as the Master Grade Gundam X, the standard version right here, so I'm going to be taking a look at both of them today. So that is the Premium Bandai Unit 3, which is a color variation, and the standard version as well. But anyway, as always, a Premium Bandai review would not be possible without those absolutely fantastic people over at Bai. So if you do want one of your own, there's a link down there in the description, and if you sign up through that link, you'll get 1,000 yen off your first order. Now here we go. So getting right into it, and that right there is what the Master Grade Gundam X Unit 3 looks like out of the box snapped together with all of its accessories and a little bit of panel lining. So as usual, we're going to look at the aesthetics first, so we're going to pop off all the accessories and leave them till sometime a little bit later. So that is everything removed. And I will mention straight away, if you take anything away from this review at all, it's be very careful with this right here. So the main reason I'm looking at this version over this one, even though I will mention this quite a bit throughout the review, this is the standard version, but the thing is, I have broken this off back here, among other things. It did break on its journey from Japan to Ireland, so this guy's had a hard life. But this is glued in place permanently, so this cannot move anymore. So be very careful with this set of joints down here because they are inclined to break. So that right there is the full 360 degree spin of the Master Grade Gundam X. Of course, this is the X3 version, but physically it's exactly the same as the standard Gundam X. This model looks awesome. All the detailing looks great. It has some nice angles, that awesome shoulder to waist ratio. And all in all, it's just sharp and has some awesome straight lines in it. This might be a little bit of a downer for some OG fans as it is a little bit straighter, more angular than the actual original design which was a little bit on the softer side and had those old school big feet. This has a more normalized design, but the details are great, color separation is pretty awesome and all in all, this thing is photogenic as hell. We have some absolutely awesome angles up in the head here, the eyes look great, it's got that real threatening angry look. This kit also features some clear plastic like we've got on the arms there in the purple that goes all the way down the side skirts, down the legs, it's also up on the shoulders but it doesn't really pop all that much. It being on top of that dark-ish color already means it doesn't really stand out too much. It would have been nice if there was a little bit of silver or something behind that to make it pop a little bit more but it still looks good. We also have that clear green in the chest and just for a bit of a comparison, there is the standard version. So for the most part this is almost identical to what we see with the X3. It's just a lighter blue and of course the shoulders are in blue as well compared to the white shoulders on this guy. We've got some very nice part separation on the torso here, the yellow, the grey, the red and we also have these awesome chest Vulcans. Usually we get the Vulcans in the head so it's nice to see something a little bit different every now and then. The Gundam X is pretty cool. If you're a big fan of surface detailing, this might leave you a little bit disappointed because there are some panel lines here, but not a whole lot and they're just fairly generic straight lines. We do have some nice detailing in the yellow triangles here. We've got some more panel line style triangle here in the butt. But on the whole, the Master Grade Gundam X right here is the same sort of simple yet very solid Master Grade that we've seen with some other lines, like the Master Grade Wing EW line and the Master Grade Seed line. So as for a bit of a comparison, there is the X3, there is the standard Master Grade Gundam X, and this is the only other Master Grade in the line, which is the Master Grade Gundam X2. Like I mentioned already, if you haven't built one of these, the most similar thing to compare it to is the Master Grade Wing EW line. As in, it is simple, solid, and just good old baseline Master Grade. It's also somewhat similar to the Seed line of Master Grades as well, like the Strike Remaster here, but I do find these kits are a little bit more detailed in general than either of these two lines right here. I guess Gundam X has always had that bit of a wing vibe to it. As tends to be the case a lot of the time, we do get some water slide decals in here. That, of course, is only with the Premium Bandai version. With the Standard version, I'm not particularly sure. I don't really remember. It's been a long, long time since I built that one. But this right here is what we get with the Premium Bandai. So now moving right on into the accessories and here is the Master Grade Gundam X with absolutely everything that it comes with. Once again, this right here is the X3 but this is the exact same set of accessories we got with this guy right here, the standard Master Grade Gundam X. So what we get is the main event which is the big old satellite cannon. 
This right here, which at first glance might just look like a shield, but it's actually its beam rifle as well. This is the shield buster rifle. In here we also have a shoulder gatling, one fairly vigorous effect part, swappable fingers for those seed and wing style hands, and lastly we have a pair of adapters as well as a 1100 scale Garrod. As for the hands in here, these are the type we've seen time and time again. That means there is a thumb right here with some articulation and the fingers just pop off like that and the alternate parts just pop right on like so. To me, these look pretty much identical to the ones on the wing kit, so let's see if they are actually swappable, because if they are, that means that is endless possibilities for customs, etc. Sharing of weapons and... Yeah, that seems identical. Let's borrow that Laoya unit just for a second to see just how identical they are. Does it work? Does it not? This is still using the fingers that came from Shenlong, so in we go and... It feels a little bit tighter, I will mention, than the actual hands that came with this, but definitely I would say 100% compatible right here. It holds the sword, so as far as I'm concerned, it fits. So the Wingmaster grades are compatible with the Seed one, so I assume that makes these compatible too, but let's find out. So this is the standard version of the Master Grade Gundam X. Pop off that hand. Lean on in for the beam rifle. Come on, drop it. So the fingers from Strike still attached here. Let's give it a go and see. Get on in there, please. And there we go, not a bother on it at all. This holds onto seed weapons as well. So it's official, the Gundam X kits are compatible with the wing kits and the Master Grade Strike kits. Awesome. I will mention after using those fingers off the other kits, this does feel a little looser than it did originally. So maybe, just maybe, don't do that unless you plan to do it permanently. Feels like it may have stretched out the hole a little bit. So the first of the weapons we're going to take a look at in here is the absolutely massive satellite cannon. So there is a whole lot going on in this. For example, when it's going to fire, this little segment extends out like so. So that's it in. There it is out. As for the articulation around back, we've got a whole lot here. We've got rotation right there. Rotation right here. Both of these wing-like segments, these are articulated as well. So they can move in and out. Both of which open up just like so, can spin around like this, and these have some really awesome looking holographic effects in here. These look a lot better than what we see with the Gundam X2, which I might take a look at some other day. But this is a combination of a pretty cool clear effect and some of these holographic inserts. So this is what it would look like without the clear part. And the clear part jazzes it up even more. These look pretty rad, in my opinion. The beam effect looks pretty awesome. This is definitely one vigorous beam effect. This attaches in like so. That is a very, very awesome beam saber. To attach this into the hand, this segment just pulls down like this. Hand attaches in there like so. There's a little bit of a tab on it. And then that goes back on like so. And that right there is what it looks like held in the hand. And from what I can see, this looks like it does fluoresce. Fluoresce? Fluoresce? A little bit under UV light, but that is just blue light, not UV. But I get the feeling this will glow under UV. To attach this satellite cannon, just flip this little segment down like so. It pops into the hole like that. As you can see, there is a bit of a recess segment here that that just slots into. And there we go, looking pretty awesome. But if you are a fan of symmetry, this might drive you absolutely demented. Also, not to forget, pop the beam saber handle in here for storage. Next up then we've got this little Gatling. This doesn't do a whole lot, it just moves forward and back like so, but this does look pretty cool. I love me some Gatlings. This then just attaches into one of these holes, that is this one up top like so. So this is one of those cool supplementary weapons that can flip out over the shoulder like that right there. Pretty awesome. Next up then in here we've got the Shield Buster Rifle, this is it in Shield Mode. It can turn to Buster Rifle Mode by flipping it this way, dropping down the handle, dropping the two sides down, and then just flipping out the sights segment like this. We've got a sticker for the sights there. Don't forget to extend that barrel out like so, not that I did or anything, but that's the way it should look. I will mention that the sights on this is particularly delicate, I have broken it on both variants of the Master Grade Gundam X that I have, it's a bit problematic at times and just so easy to snap. 
But anyway, that right there is what it looks like held in the hand. Once again, to transform it, drop that down, bring these bits up, and it just swings down into a shield, just like so. And when it's not in use, it can be stored in here, just like so. The base adapter in here does exactly what it should, holds them on a base, no issues whatsoever. We also have this alternate one in here, this can clip onto the backpack instead of onto the crotch. So now that we got the satellite cannon attached back there, there is a couple of different forms. So let's check them out. That's the standard just standing there kind of one. So the first mode we have is the hovering mode. In order to do this, we just move the entire satellite cannon array anti-clockwise till the wing looking segments are pointing down the way. Move the satellite barrel cannon clockwise till it's pointing down the way open up these big panels, not all the way, just about halfway, then flip it all up a little bit till it rests like this, and that is where flying around and hovering. Something a little bit like this. As for the second mode, it's this one right here, which is the firing of the satellite cannon. In order to get it like this, you set it up exactly the same way you did with the hovering mode, except you flip the cannon upwards instead of downwards, swing everything out a little bit to the right so it's lined up with the right hand shoulder, then that all flips on over the shoulder, open up those panels, that is all four of them, flip them around so that they're facing frontwards, it looks a little bit something like this, don't forget to extend the barrel, and then just attach the handle that drops down into the hand. This can be a little bit on the awkward side, to try and line it all up and get that hand to clip in, but you'll get it eventually, just like I did. But there is no denying that that is an absolutely, impressively awesome looking weapon right there. Let's just hope the moon is out, or he won't be shooting at anything. So now moving on to the articulation and the build, and out of the box, the build of this is great. Even after the review, everything, this is solid as a rock. I will mention, however, this one I've had since release is getting a bit loose in places, especially around the ankles, etc. A bit of a smooth criminal going on right here. I'm not quite sure if this is just the abuse this went through. Once again, I did ship this all the way from Japan to Ireland in a big massive box of other Gunpla, so... It's lived a tough enough life, so all I can say is, right off the bat, it's solid as a rock. So first up, we've got a double jointed neck here, so that is up and down. We've got that giggity 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 goo. There it is, left and right. It doesn't spin all the way around because those big pipes in the shoulder. And we've got that side to side pivot from the ball joint. Just below the head then, we've got that opening cockpit. It slides up and forward, just like so. We've got the pilot figure in there. This, I find, is quite prone to popping off. If you're trying to pose it, sometimes you might be squeezing this down and it might just pop out like that. So that can get a little bit annoying, so be careful with that. We've got a nice shoulder joint inside of this. The predominant movement is towards the front like so. It's not crazy, but it is solid and nice. The shoulder armor is separate to the arm itself. There is the arm all the way up, so a little above parallel to the ground. We've got the full 360 spin there. Upper arm rotation for that spin punch. There is that double jointed bend at the elbow. Pretty nice. Basic ball and socket here for the wrist. So exactly what you'd expect from that. Surprisingly, this does have a fairly decent ab crunch. I would expect a little less than this. It's not the greatest, of course, but it is quite good. We've got side to side there as well. Rotation is there to there, so it's blocked any further than that. Moving down to the front skirting armor, we've got up and down. This is a ball joint, so there is a little bit of in and out as well. The side skirt is on a ball joint as well. The predominant movement is swinging back and forward, but we do have a little bit of up and down. A bit of a premium butt flap here. It does move up and down a little bit, which is good. And we have this little curious drop down segment, which usually is for holding a beam rifle or something. But as far as I know, there's nothing in this kit that can be stored here. So I assume that was for a weapon kit, expansion, etc. that was uh, cancelled. Not unlike Gundam X itself. Inside the crotch here, this is your basic joint. There is no drop forward and back movement or anything else like that. As you can see, the joint is towards the front of the hip here, so that means it does kind of swing while it moves forward, which nets us this kick up to the front. Not bad. That's what we get out to the back, so not great, but then again, out to the front is definitely more important. Gundam X has absolutely no problem pulling off the splits. Full rotation of... The upper leg is blocked by that little bit of armor that you can see raises up to the front. That comes into contact with the waist unit, so you get pretty much the whole spin, just not all the way around in the full 360. We've got a very nice double jointed bend at the knee here. That is the upper bend. The lower bend comes with a separating gibbet, 
gimmick, 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 gimmick. Once again, the lower bend comes with a separating gimmick at the armor. Not the craziest one we've ever seen. It raises up here, splits here, but it's still very nice to get that. This little armor, flappy flappy, can move forward and back ever so slightly. This ankle armor is separate to the leg, so that moves on its own, up and down like that. We do have a very nice double jointed ankle right here, but this does have the potential to loosen up like my older version, which likes to do this. It is kind of cool though that the piece of armor in here is attached to that whole ankle moving segment, so I like that. We've got both a down and up right here at the toe and a bit of a pivot, so let's try it out on the ground and see what we get. So first off to the front with the toe still on the ground, this can almost hit the ground which is impressive with that bend at the knee. That is very, very nice. How's the balance? That's okay. Next up then we've out to the back, there we go, so that is okay, not great. And finally then the side to side pivot is from there all the way to there. So it is nice, could be a little bit better, but still very very nice. So on the whole the articulation in here is very very good, you're gonna get the vast majority of the poses you want out of it. Could be a little bit better at the ankles and the waist. It would have been nice to get a little bit more outward rotation at the waist because it does get blocked with the armor sometimes, but that's not the biggest deal. But not a whole lot to complain about. I will mention though, you might want to tighten up the ankles while you build it because they have the tendency to get a bit floppy. But on the whole, definitely impressive. So that right there is it for the Master Grade Gundam X and the Gundam X Unit 3. Both of these kits are exactly the same. One is a standard release you can get anywhere. The X Unit 3 is a premium Bandai only release and it's from a couple of years ago if I'm not mistaken. So that means it can be a little bit hard to get. And of course, I got mine through Bai, you can too, down in the description. But as for both of these kits, I would say they're both standard, run-of-the-mill, silver tier master grades. And that means they're pretty damn awesome. To me, they're pretty much like the wing master grades. They're simple, they're solid, essentially they are quite basic, but at the same time, that makes them solid and fun to play around with. Again, somewhat similar to the master grade Gundam Seed line, but that has a lot of variation throughout the line. If you have been considering getting either of these kits, the X or the X Unit 3, but just have been putting them off not knowing whether they're good or not, I would say go for them. They're the basic, middle of the road master grade. Simple, solid and awesome. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews and I will see you next time. Once again, all my thanks to each and every one of you guys, whether you just watch the videos, like the videos, or support me on the channel memberships and Patreon like Craig Jury, Kaiser721, Forge Horizons, Bulwick, Tyler Sanders, Caleb Engelhart, Halo Creator, and Hank Handsome.